Hi, this is Jason from Effective Dashboards and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the tree map visual. And I'm going to be talking you through four different applications of the tree map visual. And I'm going to be looking at the pros and cons and maybe some alternatives that might be a better fit for your data. Okay, so let's get started with the tree map visual. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and create a new tree map. And I'm going to create it first of all, and then I'm going to talk you through the setup. So in this tree map here, I am going to use the work type, which is the type of work as the grouping. We can see there's three different, four different options here. You've got a grouping, details, values, and tooltips. And the values that I'm going to go and add in here is going to be the number of work orders in our bat log. Okay, so we can see. As a starting point, we've got uh, it's a comparison visualization, so it allows you to compare the different category values within the work type. Um, we can see that the size of the square represents the relative magnitude of the number of work orders. Okay, so we can see this one here. Uh, I've chosen hours. Let's actually change that back to count instead. Yep, we can see here that we've got CM and PM are roughly the same size. We have no indication here, unless we use a tooltip of what that size actually is at the moment. And we can see that BR is a lot smaller than both of these. Um, now, this is where it becomes a little bit difficult. It's probably, you know, it's less, far less than half, almost a third probably, maybe even less than that. And we can see that these are smaller still. So it really is an order of magnitude. There's no accuracy really here at the moment when you see this, unless you use a tooltip, of course. But yeah, this is the, the essence of the tree map. It's, it's uses a, a, a size of a, of a rectangle to represent the relative pieces of a pie. So really similar to a pie chart in that respect. And of course, there's the same kind of issues a, a pie chart's got, which is us as humans, our brains find it difficult to compare accurately areas. Okay, we find it difficult to compare areas really accurately. If they're right next to each other, we can tell that they're roughly the same size. And this one, as soon as you get into this one, you're really struggling to understand just how much smaller it is with any real degree of accuracy um, and quickly. So, yeah, the tree map, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pretty visual and it looks quite, you know, it's one of these ones that probably has got a little bit of well factor about it. But in terms of being useful, um, it's it's limited. Um, let's look at some of the setup options here. So we've got a legend at the top, and we've got this here, this category value label switched on by default. So that negates the need for the legend. If we don't have that category value on, then yeah, we'd need to look for this color here and try and match it up to the actual um, t work type. So we'd definitely leave the category value on, and we can switch the legend off. Um, we've got the data colors, so we can go and set each of the um, the colors that represent the category values instead of just being defaulted from whatever the palette is for the um, for the overall um, report. We've got the data label. Now, I'll definitely switch that on because that's going to tell us conclusively what the actual value is, and we can see that they are roughly the same. And this one here, seventy-four. Well, it's probably you know it's. It's about a third, it's about a quarter, basically. Um, so, yeah, um, we can see that um, with the value, it makes it a bit more obvious what the, the actual value, what the actual um, measure value is when it's displayed there. The category, we've touched on that. And the rest of it is fairly straightforward. Title, background, local aspect, radio, uh, ratio, border, shoot, you know, all the other stuff's roughly the same as, as any other visualization there. So not a lot of configuration options. And um, yeah, it makes a comparison. So what I would say though is if you're going to use this, I would definitely also consider just using a straightforward you know, chart you know, but a, a column chart, because, you know, you can tell very quickly that these two are roughly the same, and you can tell there that that one is, you know, really quickly you can tell that that's about a quarter, or, the, or the, even a fifth, and then these ones here, again, that's about a quarter of that. Um, so, 
yeah, you know, it looks looks as if it might be useful, it might be good, but you know, nothing beats a, a column chart really as a as a first as a first um, a first go to option if you want to be able to compare values really simply. So that's the basic setup, and here's an option to consider rather than use this, and it will take up for, uh, take up less real estate as well. So let's go and look at the second option. Okay, so this second use case is adding in this details section here. So within each one of these rectangles, you can add additional detail. So I am going to break it down by work criticality description. So now what we can see is that each one of these rectangles, so this blue, dark blue color represents all of the CM work orders. And each one of these has now been broken down into a, a detail. And you can add one detail and we've got production, routine, environment, and safety. Now, there's a few issues with this again. First one is that once you get into the smaller proportions, it disappears. You can't, this one here, you can't even see the label. This one here, you can only see part of the label, you can't see the value. So that's the first issue. The second one is that you, you now you've lost, lost the ability to see what the actual overall value is for CM. Okay, so again, it would be really used in situations where the relative size is, is more important than knowing the detail. Okay. As an alternative, of course, let's just copy this. We can use the, there's a few things we can use, but um, you know, the, a simple column chart would be useful here. And we can see that although each of the different and of course, for this column chart, we need to switch on the legend. And I will cover column charts in a bit more detail. But there's um, now for this one here, you can see that we can see we were able to break down um, each of these different values, and we'd probably sort it by by back by count there. And we can see that you know for CM, we can see clearly what that is. And in here, you can actually switch on the the total. Um, at the top here. So, you know, this one here is a lot more straightforward and you've got the ability to see and also see the, accurately see the, the difference between these two here, plus you can actually understand the breakdown of each one of these. Now, this isn't ideal, but I think it's better than this one here. So again, it's a video on the tree map, but actually it's probably a little bit of a video about why not to use the tree map. Um, certainly for the two examples we've covered so far, which is just a basic comparison and a basic comparison with detail. Okay, so let's look at the third option. So the third option is where we can actually use, I'm gonna take away this detail here, is where we can use color to represent a, a size. Okay, so we've got the we've got the size represented by this, we've got the, the order of magnitude represented by the size of each of the rectangles, but we can also use some conditional formatting as well. So let me just show you where that is. In fact, actually I'll add the detail back in um, if I go in here, it doesn't really matter which detail I've added, but if I go into here and look at this colour here, we can see that we've got the option to choose the different colours. But if I take out the detail field here and go back into the colours, we've got this advanced option here. So it's only available when you've got a, um, a single grouping with a value. Okay, the conditional format is only available in that instance. So we'll go to colours open up advanced control and we can use any of the different colors here. We can put rules in place. We can use some darks. If you are interested in understanding a lot more about conditional formatting, then check the link below because I've got a course dedicated to conditional formatting of KPIs and setting up a KPI management system. So you might, if you're into this sort of stuff, you might find that really useful. Um, but if we're just for the example here, we're going to use the color scale. We're going to use based on the count of work work type um, I'm going to use so it's going to actually be based on the um, battle count and we'll just leave it like that okay so now we've got a situation where not only have we got the size but we've got the color representing the um, the relative so it's like a heat map okay so there's no real reason to use two of them um, but you know, you've got that option available to you if you need it. 
Um, but what I will say is the next example is where you can actually use a different measure to represent the colour. Okay, now that's going to allow us to look at two different aspects. It's going to look at allow us to use colour to represent one um, comparison, and it's going to allow us to use size to represent another comparison. So it is possible. I'm going to go through an example of how to use it in a way that might become useful. But again, it does take a little bit of explanation, a little bit of understanding by the, the person that's looking at it to understand well, what does the colour actually represent. So again, use it with a little bit of caution. So let's go through that final example. So in this example here, I am going to add in a tree map again. And I'm going to add in the group, which is work type. And I'm going to get, add in the count here. Now I've created this sample data table here because I wanted to, the data to have a certain look and feel so that I can explain how this could be used. And, and we can see here we've got the, the same the same, um, the same, more or less the same colours here. This has changed slightly, but we've got colours that represent the different category values, and we've got size that represents the number of work orders in our backlog. Now, if I wanted the colour to represent the number of hours in that backlog, then this is what I can do. So I can go into data colours, I can go to advanced controls, and in this based on field here, I'm going to use the backlog hours to represent the colour, not the backlog count. Now, what that's done now is it's telling us that, okay, CM work maybe has the most, oh, in fact, actually, let's go into the tooltip and we're going to add in the backlog hours to our tooltip. Okay, so it's telling us that CM work here has got certainly 318 work orders. Now it's got 3,000, uh, sorry, 2,319, and this one has got 3,420 hours. So in terms of colours, size, they're the same, but in terms of colours, you can see this one's got more. This one's got 2,300 2, roughly, and this one's got 3,400. But look at this one here. It's got 12,000. So we can see here that although this represents quite a small, a much smaller, this BR work represents a, a far smaller number of work orders. When you're looking at the number of hours, it's much bigger. Okay, so you can look at the two different, you know, so it does allow you to look at two different options, um, but it does take a little bit of explaining. It does take a bit of explaining and a little bit of a bit of education. You can see here, this one here has got 19 work orders, so it represents the size here, represents a really small portion of the number of work, um, to count of the work orders. But with almost nine thousand, just over nine thousand eight hundred hours, it's 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 almost bright red because it's quite a, a large proportion of the actual overall man hours. So another example where it probably would be useful, more useful. Um, however, an even easier example here would be just to go and create a table. And um, let me just show you very quickly. Um, if we just create a table here and added these values in, and then just added a little bit of conditional format into the table. I'm just doing this very quickly. And let's change this to be hours, and let's put some background in here. And then we'll just sort by, you know, so here you're getting the, roughly the same idea, but just in a table, and you can see the values straight away. So you've got the idea here that, you know, these this value here is high, this value here is low. So again, unless it really is something, a heat map is something you want to use, and this uses far less real estate, and we haven't even optimized this yet, it would use far less real estate to get across the same message. So it's um, a bit of a funny video because it's to describe a tree map, but it's more or less to descri and describe the, the features of a tree map in four different scenarios about how you might want to configure it. But in my opinion, I think there's far better alternatives that you can use, which I've displayed here and, and give you a, an indication of. And um, yeah, you would really only use a tree map if you, you felt it was something that your users really wanted and something that would really benefit them. Okay, so thanks for listening. If you're interested in learning more about conditional formatting, check out the course below. If you 
like this video then give it a thumbs up, I'd appreciate that. And if you want to keep up to date with the latest videos, I release one more or less every week, then click on the, the bell and click on the notifications and you'll get a notification each time I release a video. Thanks again for listening and watching and I'll talk to you in the next video.